Hi there. Uh, so this is the rig that I built over the last uh, days. It's a thermos flask with a motor and in the bottle is uh, this metal steering thing. And if I put power on the motor then this will uh, turn around. This is a thermometer uh, uh, temperature sensor. And um, so if I put electricity on this uh, motor this will uh, spin around and the idea is to demonstrate how uh, spinning that uh, thing around will heat up the water uh, uh, to demonstrate that, that by measuring the temperature but of course first we have to determine uh, uh, let's say and then we basically are demonstrating the conversion of the power of the rotation into heat Hi there, so we're back in my lab uh, we have uh, Build the whole device. Uh, it's uh, the electro motor is turning uh, quite stable. Uh, it's uh, mixing the water in the thermos flask. Uh, on the screen, you can see that uh, I'm measuring the temperature. It's now 13 degrees Celsius. That's what uh, uh, the sensor outputs. I've got a little, uh, uh, let's say, a breadboard here with some old uh, chips. But this is the one that I'm using. It's basically uh, this is the interface with uh, with the term temperature sensor. It puts it out through the serial cable. Uh, I've been making the calculations for uh, the power that uh, is dissipated. Uh, so we uh, measured uh, without uh, water uh, 200 and what it, 130 milliampere, with water uh, 250. The difference is 120. If you do 120 milliampere times the 8.43 volt, you end up with uh, a power of 1.2. 0116 watt that uh, power has to go somewhere uh, it's being consumed electrically and uh, so it will be heating up uh, every part of the of the electro motor uh, maybe the wood and the water inside the, the thermos flask and so i've been looking into the energy needed to heat uh, water uh, to heat one uh, gram of water you need uh, 4.2 joules if you want to heat it uh, by one degree we have 675 uh, uh, grams milliliters because uh, uh, one liter is a thousand milliliter and it's also uh, one kilo usually so uh, you have 675 grams of water uh, which would need uh, 4.2 joule for each gram to heat up uh, one degree celsius so that is 2835 uh, uh, um, seconds that it would take if you put in one watt if you divide that uh, through 60 then you get 47 minutes to heat the whole thing uh, uh, one degree celsius uh, but we are now uh, seeing a little increase already to 14 maybe it was 13.9 uh, degrees celsius but uh, technically uh, it would have to take uh, an hour from now that uh, the temperature of the water reaches so we'll wait and see. Well, it's a little bit later and uh, I have two problems. One is that apparently uh, the way I mounted this, uh, there's lots of uh, resistance uh, of the motor as it's turning around. So if I leave it like this, it's slower. <laughs> it's almost twice as fast. So a lot of the energy is going to be uh, lost somewhere between uh, the motor and the, and the stirring device. So this is another iteration of the design of the test rig because uh, this part here uh, the axle was uh, basically digging itself into the wood and uh, getting stuck so uh, a lot of energy got dissipated uh, at that point and of course I didn't want that and now it's uh, turning away uh, at a slightly higher speed um, I'll leave it like this uh, for a while it's now 15 degrees uh, if this uh, energy uh, calculation that I made earlier is uh, correct then it will still take about 50 minutes to get through uh, to uh, 16 degrees I'm not sure if you can read this it's very flashy but it's still 50 degrees Celsius so uh, we'll wait a little bit and hopefully this works it's not the most optimal way to uh, transfer uh, rotational uh, uh, energy into uh, into heat but uh, it certainly uh, is a good demo I think of the principle 
because the search then becomes uh, how to most efficiently do that and how to deal with the effects of uh, taking a torque of the of the axle and that's a whole story uh, a whole other story that you have to think about so uh, well we'll see what happens so i now put the, the axle a little bit off center uh, and uh, you can immediately see that it uh, turns a little bit uh, heavier and you hear a little bit more uh, water uh, noises so uh, i think that's a good sign uh, because uh, you know if you just let it turn and it uh, creates a vortex and uh, and that's uh, stable then uh, i don't think you're losing lots uh, lots of energy in the water <laughs> Uh, this is just uh, to make this experiment work. I'm thinking of quite a number of ways in order to, uh, in which I can improve on this uh, on this design, and I probably will. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, we'll continue this. See what happens. It's 15 degrees Celsius on the screen, and uh, well, we'll see. So uh, about half an hour uh, passed. Uh, since I last uh, filmed this and lo and behold it's amazing the temperature has gone up one degree Celsius inside the thermos uh, flask uh, which is about what I expected it's not that it's gotten hotter in the room it's actually uh, still uh, quite cold um, even though it's warmer than uh, than, than 16 degrees uh, but uh, the top is uh, quite well uh, closed so I don't expect uh, much heat to enter the flask but we'll keep this uh, turning for another hour, uh, or another couple of hours, uh, and then the temperature still should move up. And this might look like a, a very uh, small uh, achievement, but uh, and it is, of course. <laughs> but if this was a, a big water tank of, uh, of, uh, of uh, cubic meters, and there would be a big uh, pedal in it churning away, then of course uh, it would get warmer and warmer and that heat would be stored in the water and if you insulate uh, the water tank enough then that could last quite a long time and, uh, so 16 degrees so it's a little bit later and uh, I have to still uh, check if, uh, if it's the room temperature that uh, drove it up but we do have uh, 17 degrees Celsius now uh, what I'll do is I'll stop the motor and uh, and basically uh, take out the, the temperature sensor and then uh, see where the wire is here and then we'll uh, leave it and it will of course uh, uh, show us what the temperature in the room actually is I'll take this out without ruining anything So this is the oh okay this is the very small uh, pedal it's much smaller than it was before so that's of course another reason why it takes long but it, what it does it basically uh, gets the water to to churn inside uh, the thermos flask I cannot look inside it's too dark there's water in it that you, uh, you probably can see that and it's still uh, rotating as you can see but uh, I guess this this experiment uh, uh, I think uh, is uh, uh, can be considered uh, successful. Uh, and uh, oh, you can see actually that, and that might be uh, a degree more. Oh, there it's back on 17 degrees. So really, the water is 17 degrees. The external temperature is uh, 14 degrees. Um, and so it actually uh, got one degree warmer while the outside temperature got uh, about uh, four degrees lower so that really means that uh, the heat has to come from uh, the rotation because there's no other heat source um, <coughs> in the thing uh, you could say well maybe the temperature sensor is uh, the heat source but then it wouldn't be a very good temperature sensor <laughs> of course so uh, the challenge is now to find a different way to do this maybe or uh, do a little bit more calculations the nice thing about uh, uh, a pedal churning in water is of course that it's really low tech that it is uh, not going to wear out very soon uh, you have uh, well boat propellers for instance they they do a lot of churning in water and they don't uh, well they do uh, wear but it takes years for them to uh, to show damage 
usually. Except when something hits it, of course. But, uh, well, that's the next episode. Thanks for watching. Until now.